it's time for my first foray into Singapore's waters. I'm leaving the safety of our shores under the guidance of Elvin, a kayaker with some all-round explorer talents. This is a leg pedal kayak. So you pedal like this. Ah, like a bicycle. Yes. How did you know that pink is my favorite color? <laughs> yeah, bright hot pink color. All right, so where are we going to take it? We'll do three things today with this kayak. First, we'll go for hunting for some mussels. Next... Right here. <laughs> yeah, right there. Next, we'll visit a mystery place at an island. And lastly, we'll do some kayak fishing. I watch a lot of fishing videos, but I don't do much fishing. <laughs> okay. I'm excited to try it. This kayak has become popular amongst fishing enthusiasts because it's a hands-free experience. Fish on! Fish on! It's also less tiring than traditional kayaking. After my dry run, I'm ready for my adventure. I think. Okay. Daniel, you're fine? You're okay to go? Yep. Not afraid of water? <laughs> Not afraid. Uh, okay, go up. <laughs> up, 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 up. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, you're fine, you're fine. Okay, don't worry. Okay. All right. Slowly, slowly. We made it. Okay, Daniel, off you go. See you later. Okay, what, take what? care. Bye bye. What? What? <laughs> You're just leaving me. Come back. I will go where the ocean takes me. You see, all these blue barriers that are installed over here, they are actually built by our Coast Guard to prevent illegal immigrants. We found something that is growing under the blue barriers. Okay, then we approach the blue barrier, slowly pedal over. Can you see? When we reached the blue barrels, he started flipping them over, and suddenly these clean blue barrels had so much wildlife, ocean life, just covering it. I was not expecting that. Look at the muscle. Take the correct size ones. Like about finger size, all right? Not the too small. Uh, all these are small. The big ones? Can anyone just come and take these things that are growing on the barrels? Yeah, yeah, they are naturally grown. Oh, <laughs> that's big. The big ones. Those are green lip mussels. They take about half a year to grow to a size of your finger. But they are quite abundant in our sea, especially in Basari's area because of the water condition. As the barrels get turned upside down, so does my stomach. I have never been seasick a day in my life. I've been out at sea so many times, kayaking, cruises, jet skiing, but today was just one of those days. Daniel, you okay? Oh! <laughs> I still don't feel good, but let's soldier on. After 40 minutes, we reach the mysterious place that Elvin has been wanting to show me. Daniel, we are approaching mangrove area. It's a part of Pulau Ubin. Very rarely visited by anybody except kayakers. We are heading over to Jelotong River. Okay, this is one of our last remaining mangrove river in Singapore. Is this the kind of place you find a lot of wildlife around? Yeah, sometimes. I once spotted a mudskipper this big. <laughs> they are called the giant mud skipper. So it's uh, pretty hard to find in the urban city in Singapore. Our island has less than 5% of its original mangroves remaining today. But it seems like Singaporeans are increasingly aware of their importance. They provide shelter for wildlife and protect our coastline. Is this your favourite playground? Yeah, this is one of my playgrounds. And there's a lot of playgrounds in Singapore, but this is one of the most beautiful I've seen in Singapore as well. Yeah, it connects all the way up to the north of Pulau Ubin. You actually can exit Pulau Ubin through the mangrove river. It's my first time in a mangrove, and it's not at all what I expected. I always pictured it a little bit eerie, spooky, creepy, but it's actually so nice and calm and serene. If you Keep quiet, listen, you actually can hear cricket sound, right? Then it's time to leave the serenity of the mangroves to do some fishing. 
Okay, Daniel, the water uh, is good. Let's try our luck. Okay, we'll do a little bit of kayak fishing. I get the rod while Elvin settles for some handline fishing. Our secret weapon. Dead stream. <laughs> okay, handline fishing is very sensitive. You can feel the fish right away when it bites. So when you strike, you just need to hook it and slowly bring it in. So let's try. It takes skill to read the currents and water conditions. And when blessed with good luck, I think I feel something. Oh. Come on, get in, man. Okay, we got the hood on already. Yes, pull. Pull it. Hey, let's see what fish is this. Oh, it's a red snapper. <laughs> nice catch, man. Alvin calls himself an average fisherman, but look at his catch. While I have to settle for nothing. The sun might be setting soon, but we're not done yet. Time to clean our catch of the day. Mussels and a red snapper. So if you look at here, these are all barnacles that grows on the mussel. So these are not edible. We need to remove that. All right, Daniel, next, the fish. We'll dig out, we'll descale, we'll clean, so it ends up in your dinner table. You are doing fine. Remember, scale outwards, so you don't let all the scale fly to your hands. <laughs> now the last part. We need to remove all the intestine, all, all the guts of the fish. That was a tiring day out in Elvin's playground. I'm glad I pushed through because most Singaporeans know Pulau Ubin's camping sites, kampong vibe and cycling trails. But I got to see a side of it that most would never see. There are some places you can't take shortcuts to see. There's no car, bus or train that's going to get you over here. But trust me when I say it's hard work, but it's worth it. Playing has enabled me to engage with nature. I've immersed myself in it.